Tony Finau, who is making his season debut, Tony met with the media earlier today. Let's listen. My experiences in the past have shown just being part of some of these teams late into September, um, you're kind of on from August to September. You got the FedEx Cup playoffs. Um, you're trying to make a push to, the, to East Lake, and then at East Lake, you're trying to win the FedEx Cup. And then you really don't have any time off. You know, you have a couple weeks to prepare for a big cup, whether that's the Ryder Cup or the President's Cup. This year, I knew in my mind, the back of my mind, that I was going to make sure I was prepared for the President's Cup. But when the President's Cup was done, I, I wanted to rest. I knew I needed it. And um, again, just my experiences in the past, um, I knew that I needed to um, just get away from it for a little bit mentally and emotionally and physically. And then uh, would be excited to come back and play. So that's how I feel now. I'm definitely um, eager to compete again and just be back out and um, doing what I love, and that's competing and playing golf. What do you expect out of the game as you got to take that time? Yeah, I don't feel too rusty. You know, um, I had a nice practice week um, last week in Scottsdale. I spent about 10 days back, uh, back home in Scottsdale, and the weather was perfect. Um, they are coming out of overseed, most of the golf courses there. The greens weren't as good as I would have, have liked to practice on, but overall I felt like I had some really nice reps. I had a nice uh, day yesterday with my caddy, reuniting with him uh, since the President's Cup and, um, and things. So um, my game feels good, and you know, I expect to just continue competing at a high level. You know, honestly, I think uh, you know, my, I've, my game has improved, I feel like, each year of my career. And, you know, I'd like to just pick up kind of where I left off, hopefully. And uh, another question, you mentioned how you've been here seven times, you played well here, it's one of your favorite spots. A lot of changes coming to the PGA Tour schedule next year, and then we kind of do the schedule uh, after this season. What do you hope happens uh, to a match like this? These fall things are going to go Yeah, well, I. Uh, I just know that I enjoy I enjoy playing a lot of the a lot of these events. You know, I again this is our family's favorite resort. Um, you know, one of the golf courses that I enjoy playing. It's a place that uh, I hope I can come back and compete. And um, you know, that's the case for I think a lot of the fall events. You know, I, I'll be playing next week in Houston, another golf course that I enjoy, another city that I like. And um, I think a lot of the top players, you know, would agree that the some of the fall events are some of our favorite on tour. Yeah, it's amazing to get this type of field. I think, uh, as as we all alluded to, you know, this is my seventh start. I think one of the stronger fields that we've had, and, and the seven starts that I've had here, and um, it's just nice. I think guys um, that visit here, play the golf course, um, enjoy the vibe. It's a golf course that I've always um, been a fan of. It's a place I've always been a fan of. So I think as guys have traveled and taken the time to play it, you know, have enjoyed it, and you know, we have ex you know, number one player in the world here, Scotty Scheffler, and um, it's cool to have a, a really nice field. I can ask one more. <laughs> uh, next year, you know, you now know what the elevated, extra elevated events are going to be. Have you had a little time to digest what the schedule is going to look like? Uh, and from January on uh, this year, and you know, is that is an exciting time for you to, to see all those events? Yeah, no doubt. I love all the all the events that have been elevated. Uh, I really enjoy. I play most of them, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, to that challenge. I think it's nice to have a lot of the best players in the world playing together more often. I think that's something that our game needs, and um, and the reason for these elevated events. So I think the. The events that, that have been elevated this next season, um, I'm really looking forward to, and um, I'm sure for most guys in the world, uh, top top players in the world uh, would agree. We'll finish up here with Doug and then Dave. Maybe going out on a stretch here, but any parallels to 2016 Puerto Rico uh, track re first one on tour? Yeah, I think there are some parallels. I think mostly just the vibe, <laughs> you know, similar weather. Um, it can it can get breezy here. I would say Puerto Rico gets a lot a lot windier than than here. But yeah, I would say just the vibe and the feel, you know, um, can kind of put you in the same kind of in the same mind mind frame. So um, yeah, I think looking back at two, in 2016, you know, you were there, Doug. I think it's 
definitely some good vibes, and hopefully I bring those winning vibes here this week. Tony Fee now, where he be now in the winner's circle of late. July 3M Open erased a five-shot deficit with 11 holes to play. Final round 67 to come from behind and win for the third time on the PGA Tour. Yep, hoist that trophy. Then he won for the second straight week at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Final round 67 again. 26 under 262 at Detroit Golf Club to beat Patrick Cantlay, Cameron Young, and Taylor Pendrith by five shots. So here's a look at his season in review. You can see Tony Finau, 20 of 25 cuts, seven top tens, two runner-up finishes, and of course those two victories again, the 3M Open and of course at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. So with that, it is time for a little buy or sell Tony Finau edition. So buy or sell. Tony Finau, has he definitively shed any stigma of not being a, quote, true winner with all the runner-ups in between wins? Yes, he has. He shed that skin, Matty Adams. He has by winning back-to-back -back on the PGA Tour, by being someone who has 10 top 10s in major championships, four top fives. Yeah, the resume now looks a little bit different when you say he's a four-time winner on the PGA Tour, having doubled his total of wins on the PGA Tour with that storyline hanging over his head. That's the thing. He was asked about it time after time, stop after PGA Tour stop. When will you get it done? He got it done, and then he got it done again, adopting that Mamba mentality, which he talked about years ago when he yeah. lost to Webb Simpson in Phoenix. Yes, I think he has shed that stigma. Totally agree. Okay. Uh, Tony, Tony Fino, so a buy on that one, I guess. I totally agree on that because when he was asked about it, it was, it was with understanding. If, if you notice the last question he was asked today about 2016 and similar kind of setting, he called it a vibe in terms of where they're playing this week. But after he won in 2016, he had eight runner-up finishes. So right. it, in fairness, there was merit to him being asked about it, even though at times I'm sure it can grade on a player where you're constantly having to answer to why you're not getting it done. But what was interesting through that whole period is that Tony Finau never lost the spark. He never lost the hope. I think he never lost the belief that he was capable of doing it. However, once he did do it, now we're talking about the five-inch fairway between mm. the ears. Once he broke through from the standpoint of just mad natural, natural talent, that's the thing that I think carries him across the line now. Because we always knew that he had the physical skills to do it. Now he knows that he can do it, and I think it's going to come in bunches. Let's take a look at his, his career. He won in Puerto Rico. He won on the playoffs, Liberty National. Now he wins two times last season. How about buy or sell this statement? Tony Finau's best season hasn't happened yet. I would agree with that, actually, because, mm. again, when we look at, at the total body of work from Tony Finau, he went through such a long stretch where he was knocking on the door. Sometimes it was his fault. Sometimes it was just a twist of fate that kept him from being in the winner's circle. Tony Finau knows where he belongs, right? You could just tell the way he carries himself, the company that he puts himself in in terms of his competitiveness mm. out in the golf course. So from my standpoint, I think that the Tony Finau we're seeing now is a Tony Finau we've never seen before. So Coming off those victories, as I just mentioned to you, that I think they're going to come in bunches because he's capable of it, even in a casual round where he shoots in the 50s. Yeah. I think Tony Finau now is different than any Tony Finau during the course of his career. Looks like he is setting the table for something special at the age of 33. Now, I have a tendency at times to hand out nine major championships when there are only four a year, so I got to be careful here. But I do think that a World Golf Championship is in his future or a major championship is in his future, despite us talking so strongly, rightfully so, about the likes of Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy and John Rahm and Colin Morikawa. It's going to be hard for Tony. He's been in the mix, but I think in terms of the jet fuel that he has with the confidence that he must carry after winning back-to-back -back weeks, after answering those questions, he has the game. I think he's putting much more freely. I think in the throws that's of all those key. top tens, not leaving those putts short, uh, putting with key. a lot more authority. Yeah, I think the, the key is the putter. Yes. What does he do with the putter? Because if you look at a player of the, of the likes that you were just talking about, by and large, the thing that we're talking about there is power. 
Mm. Right? The ability of these players to power it out there. Now, Colin Morikawa might be an outliner in that. He's not like he's short by yes. any measure, but his iron play is so good that he can stick it close mm. to those pins. But everybody else, we're talking about the ability at times to overwhelm a golf course with just pure power. Tony Finau has that. The question with Tony is what putter is going to show up right. week to week. And if the putter is on song, if the putter is a little bit more calm because there is a sense of belief that flows behind it, yeah. then if that flat stick's working, then watch out. We know he has big plans in this game. And earlier today in Mexico, he shared his thoughts on making the U.S. Ryder Cup team in Rome. I know for sure, um, right off the top of my head, um, you know, being on that Ryder Cup team and, uh, in Rome is, is going to be a goal of mine, and it's something that uh, I think a lot of guys um, want to be a part of. So I'm, one, I'm included in that, and I'd love to be a part of that team in Rome. So I think right out of the, right out of the gate, that's something that I, that I know will be one of my goals. Big goal for Tony. Is he a lock for the U.S. Ryder Cup team in 2023 in Roma, Marco Simone? You know, as much as I'm a believer in Tony Finau with everything that we just talked about in terms of, of what he is capable of, he's not a lock for the United mm. States Ryder Cup team. Not, not in my view. Right now, he's 35th in the rankings. If you, if you look at his body of work, when you're talking, say, Ryder Cup, and let's talk President's Cup, too, because they look upon it as Team USA. It's an umbrella that covers uh, both of those events from the perspective of the, of the players mm. behind it. Uh, his record in the Ryder Cup is 3-3-0. and oh. His record in the President's Cup is 3-2-3. Three, and three. So, overall, he is 6-5-3. and three. Winning record. Uh, in fairness to him, yeah. It, is, yeah. it is a winning record, yeah. but it's not a record that is so dominant that when you're thinking about Tony Finau, that regardless of what he does between now and then, you'd say, oh, well, he's definitely got to be on there. He's got to be a lock because uh, he, he is playing so well. We can't be without him. The intangible with Tony is that he very much like Scotty Scheffler, remember, uh, is a player that the other players want in that locker room. Get it? Respect that. But you can't put a player on the team at this point who's not close to being on the team. We've got a huge amount of time between now and then. If he earns his way close or onto automatic and slams the door, get it, understand it, capable of it, has the potential to do it. But to sit here in November of 2022 and say that he's a lock for the Ryder Cup team, that I'm not buying. What I'm going to sit here on November 1st, 2022 and say he is a lock for the Ryder Cup team. Please. You might not put him on. Zach can't put him on yet, but I think because of what you said toward the end of, of your talk there about the players want him on that team, I think that carries a lot of weight in this era post-task force where the players' voices much more collaborative than the top-down leadership that we saw during the struggles. Barring some injury, barring some unforeseen loss of form, because of the cohesion that he brings – the locker room presence that he is yep. as a good guy, as a non-troublemaker, as someone who doesn't have the baggage of some of those teams. And look, they won despite the Brooks Bryson brouhaha in 2021 or 2022 in, in Wisconsin. I think that Tony's game, I think that Tony's demeanor, popularity, and winning record make him a lock. A, a sliver of a winning record against a time when the... When the American teams were actually winning. So I think that that total should be a little bit stronger. But if you take a look at players that have, for example, received the captain's pick, regardless of how much they are beloved in the locker room, if they are outside mm. of, on the, on the points ranking, say 15th, 16th, even 17th, it's really hard for a captain to dig deep and grab. He is right now, November 1st, 2022, 35th well, he's in the making points. his season debut. I get point. it, but he's 35th in the points. The one thing that you said that's kind of the get out of jail free card with all of that is if he continues in his most yes. current yeah, form. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if he continues in his most current form, he's going to be so close or he's going to earn his way onto the team. All yeah. I'm saying right now is unless he does that, I do not see him as automatic. I just think in this recent era of players throwing each other under the bus and captains not communicating, I'm talking Patrick Reed and Jim Furyk and Tiger, I should have had a different partner, and Spieth and Reed and 
Brooks and Bryson, those, those scars to me are still fresh, Matt. I, I think the Americans will be smart to continue to focus on cohesion and communication yeah. and not rest on their laurels. And I think Tony Finau has been a part of the recent success of these American squads. Well, again, you have to define how he's been a part of the recent success. Yes. Clearly, he's a guy that they like to be around for yeah. all those reasons that you're talking about. And the only thing I'm saying is that if it is a criteria of simply saying he should be there yeah. from a lock position because the players want him there from a lock position, I look at that and say, isn't that mentality part of the mentality that got the United States Ryder Cup team in mm. trouble over the last mm. couple of decades? Because it was kind of a, this is our club and let's bring back the same guys that we've been going into battle with for all these years. And they kept losing. I don't think Tony Finau necessarily is one that fits that particular sure. mold necessarily, but I think that the performance has to come before all other considerations. And again, reiterating, he is capable of the performance, yeah. but until the performance is proven, I don't think there's anybody that's going to be a lock in that situation. It's a good point that you make. We'll see if he can make a big step forward this week Or just continuing in the step. Which I think so. Yeah. I think he's right there and probably never more confident than he is right now on the PGA Tour at the age of 33.